All right, graphing derivatives. This tends to be a really confusing type of problem where they'll give you the original function as a graph, so they won't even give you the equation, they'll just give you a graph, and they'll ask you to draw or sketch the derivative. Now, this confuses everyone. I often get used to get lost in these myself. Even as I'm tutoring someone, and I've tutored this class a million times, it's still, there's something inherently really wacky about doing this, because you sort of figure, oh, if this is shooting up to the left, that means the bottom one should be shooting up to the left too, the derivative. Or if this one has a level spot, you're thinking you'll have a level spot in your derivative as well. But it turns out it's a little wackier than that. But um, it's going to turn out we have a really important, crucial first step that's going to save you most of the time. And that is making sure just find the level spots on the original graph. And then those are going to be the intercepts of your derivative. So don't worry if you didn't quite catch that just now. We're about to get a bunch of practice with this. All right, so here's an example. We got your standard parabola. I love to use parabolas and you know y equals x squared because everyone knows what the graph looks like. So it's one of those things where you can kind of go through, see how the process works on something you know what it should look like, and that'll make you a little bit more confident when you go into the ones that you don't know what it looks like. All right, so sketch the derivative. That's going to be the instructions. So what you'll do is, and this is what I recommend, this is the crucial first step that'll save you so much confusion. Wherever you have a maxima and minima in the original function, and even if you haven't seen that video yet, the one I just did, the previous video to this, mentions what they are and that the derivative is equal to zero, right? So like if you have a level spot, you can see the tangent, the tangent line at a local minima or at the, at the valley, at that, that, that minimum value right there at the bottom of this crevasse or this valley, the slope is zero. So that means the derivative is equal to zero, right? But what does equal to zero mean? It means literally f prime of that number, which is, and this looks like x equals zero, equals zero. Doesn't this look like a point though? If you plug in zero and you get zero, that's the point zero comma zero. So that's what I mean by maxima and minima are x-intercepts of the derivative. So whatever x value you see a level spot on the original curve, you're gonna go down and just put an x-intercept of the derivative right there. At that point, that's the only x-intercept of the curve. So the only question is, what happens next? So what I recommend now is go to step two. Once you got your x-intercepts, which just happened at every level spot on the original curve, then we're gonna go to step two, which is estimate a couple of other points. So just go to like, I don't know, x equals one. And by the way, if you're not already doing this, a lot of students to save paper, they'll sort of write these graphs next to each other. I would highly recommend drawing them over each other like I've done here. Because what that allows you to do is just kind of like carry, carry a line straight down. So at this point, what do you think the approximate slope is right there? Well, it's up to the right, which means it's a positive number. So it doesn't matter if it's positive one, two, or three, or whatever. Point is that f prime of whatever this number is, is a positive number. It's like two or three. So that means it's when I go to that same number on the graph below, I'm up here somewhere. I'm not down here. I'm up here because if the slope is positive here, that means my f prime graph has to be above the x-axis. The y values have to be positive because f prime is really, we're talking about the y values here. So if the slope is positive here, that means the y value of f prime has to be positive here. And then right here, again, this looks like, and this is another thing that always trips up students. This looks like, and I mean to me too, I also get tripped up by this. This looks like a positive slope. Like you would think that your derivative should be above, you know, above the y axis somewhere up here, because if you, as you go to the left, you're shooting off to positive infinity. So you've, you know, everyone, including myself, thinks of that as shooting off to positive infinity. It's a positive slope. But it turns out technically that's not what's going on. Because when you read slopes, if you want to just pick the slope off a graph, you don't look at which way the arrow points, you just look at a point and draw a tangent line and ask yourself, hey, what's the slope of that tangent line? Well, that tangent line right there, isn't it a negative slope? Because it's going down the tangent line. If you go right, it goes down. So it's the opposite direction. This was a positive tangent line slope. This is a negative tangent line slope. So that means that the derivative is actually negative over here. So if we go straight down from this point, I need to have a negative value. So now at this point, we just figured out, you know what, this goes up here, this goes down here. So I've got some points here. What, what sort of thing do I connect them with? Do I connect them with a line? Do I want a swoopy thing or what? Well, it turns out you can kind of get a guess here because you know that the if you, anytime you look at a parabola, you know the original function had an x squared in it, right? Because that's how you get parabolas. This one happens to be y equals x squared, 
but a parabola anywhere on the xy plane is going to have an x squared in it, which means a derivative is going to have an x in it. x with no powers, just x to the first power. And what does an x to the first power always graph like? Well, it's a line, right? So that means that once you've um, picked out a few points here to color in, you've got to connect them with a line because you know the derivative of a parabola is always going to be a straight line. So that's how we get this graph of the derivative. And we don't have to know the exact slope because they didn't give us the exact formula. It would be, you know, the only way you're going to get this thing wrong is if you drew a horizontal line or you drew, it would be, it would also be incorrect if you drew an angled line that had a y-intercept of four or something because the derivative at zero is not four, it is zero because that's where our level spot is. All right, so connecting the dots, you just want to make an estimate of the shape based on what the original thing looks like. All right, so let's look at this one. We know it looks, this is something like y equals x cubed. We don't know exactly, because it might have a 2 in front of it or something, but the point is that this is pretty much a cubic. But let's, so that's our guess, but let's just use the sketching technique I told you and see if it works out. So step number one was look for level spots. And it looks like this has a level spot right there, once again at the origin. So that means that since I have a level spot at x equals 0, that means that the, that's an x-intercept of the derivative, because this is f prime, remember. All right, so then, and then we just need to pick off some points. So as you go off to the right here, would you say the slope is getting more positive or more negative? As you start from the origin and move outwards, aren't we getting steeper and steeper up to the right? So that means the slope is becoming more and more positive. So the slope is headed in this direction. So the derivative is getting more and more positive, like bigger and bigger positive numbers, as we go this way along the x-axis. But then to the left of the origin, like over here, don't we have negative slopes? Or no, actually positive slopes. I'm sorry. See, I just got burned. Same, the same sort of logic I told you to avoid in the last slide, I just got burned by. This to me looks like it's pointing off to negative infinity. But you just got to ignore this little arrow right here and just think, hey, what is the slope of this tangent line right here? Just ignore the arrow and just say, hey, what is the slope of that tangent line? If you're not sure, you could do rise over run, pick a couple of points, find the actual slope. But because it's sloping in this direction, it's going up to the right, this is a positive slope, which means that over here, the slope is also positive. So basically, there's no point you could point to on this entire original function that doesn't have a positive slope. The slope is always positive. So f prime is always positive, except for one point at zero. So I found this x, I found out that it has a that f prime is equal to zero because that's where my level spot is, but then everywhere else it's positive. And the only way to get this with a smooth thing is just kind of do like this, right? A parabola. And of course that actually makes a lot of sense because if the original function was really x cubed, then what's the derivative of x cubed? It's 3x squared. But the point is there's an x squared in there, which means we're looking at a parabola. So again, this is one of those things where, you know, is it a tall skinny parabola like this? Or is it a wider one like I just drew? It doesn't really matter. As long as you draw a parabola with the x-intercept at the origin, you'll get full credit. All right, polynomial. Ooh, this one's gonna be a little bit dicier because more is going on, but let's just do our usual thing. So first, first step, always look for level spots. So maxes and mins. Looks like on the original function, slope equals zero right here. So I'm just going to go straight down and draw an x-intercept right there. And then also has another slope equal to zero at this maximum right here. So I'm just going to go down there. And there we go. All right, so I've got two x-intercepts out of the deal. Now I just need to look at this thing and say to myself, huh, you know, obviously the slope is not zero between these two zeros. It's either going to go up like this or it's going to go down like this. Which one is it, though? I need to pick one of these. Well, it looks like the slope is actually positive, because if I look between these two zeros, between this point and this point, the slope is positive, because we're kind of start level, then we go uphill for a while, which is a positive slope, and then we get back to zero again. So that means that the slope is positive between these two x-intercepts. So I can just draw something like that. Maybe it's taller, maybe it's shorter. doesn't matter. Point is, I have a little kind of like hill between those two intercepts. But, and then if you look at this section of the graph, to the left of that first minima, 
what are all my slopes along here? Well, they're all negative. They're either very negative or a little bit less negative or a little bit less negative and all, you know, getting towards zero. So the point is that all throughout this region of the graph, from x equals this to the left, all in this area, the derivative should be negative because the slope is negative. So that means I need the, this thing to be down below the x-axis. I need my y's, my y values of uh, f prime to be in negative territory, negative y territory in order to have a negative slope on the original. So that's how I got that. And then if you have your thinking caps on, you're probably like, huh, maybe this is a parabola again. And you'd be right, this is probably a cubic. It's not just, in our last one we had x cubed, which gives you that sort of very, that disco thing. But if you have x cubed plus 2x squared or something and throw in some x squared and some x's in the mix, that's how we get this double kind of swoop deal. But, and that makes sense, because if you look at this, if you look at this right-hand region, to the right of that intercept, these are all negative slopes. Which means it makes sense that this graph down here is below the x-axis in negative f prime territory, negative y territory. All right, I know these are really confusing and hopefully I'm clearing up the confusion a little bit. What you kind of have to do is just practice a ton and then compare your answers to the back and then watch this video again. You might have to watch this video a couple of times, do some practice, watch it again to kind of get the feel for this because this really is, it's so tricky. I've tutored students you know, intelligent students who are doing pretty well in calculus, I could spend an hour with somebody, you know, one night on just this topic before a quiz, and then we have to spend another hour on it the day before the final, or the day before the, the actual test on it, because it's just that confusing. For some reason, it's so counterintuitive. It's just kind of wacky. All right, so this one, the only difference between this uh, problem and the previous one is we have a vertical shift. All I did was take the same curve, the same swoopy, and just move it up. So instead of cutting through the origin or something, it, it all stays up above the x-axis. But it turns out the derivative is going to be the same. Because look at this. I have a level spot right here. So I just go right down, put in an intercept. And I have another level spot right here in the same spot I did last time. So that's another intercept. Between those two, the slope is positive. So we have to be in positive territory somewhere up here. And then to the right, we're in negative territory. The, the slope is negative for this part of the curve. Therefore, I need to be in negative territory somewhere down here for the derivative. Same thing here. The slope through this, this area of the curve is all negative. So once again, I have to be down here somewhere. And the shape that's going to make that work out is a parabola like this. So you can see how putting in those x-intercepts really helps you. Because if you start out by finding the peaks and valleys and just put those as x-intercepts on the f prime graph, then all you have to do is just pick whether to go above the axis or below the axis and just sort of fill in the gaps between the intercepts you made. I guarantee you, and this, is, this is a technique I came to after a lot of struggling with this with students, and um, I guarantee you this is the way to do it so you don't get confused. Because if you, if you have to think too much on these, it's just so easy to get your mind sort of twisted in knots trying to figure everything out. So once again, now this one we got more turns. So meaning this is a higher order polynomial. The last two we looked at were cubics. But see how this one goes from positive, it has like a swoopy, then another swoopy, then another swoopy. That means the derivative is probably, that means the original function has one higher exponent of x than the ones we've been looking at. And therefore the derivative will have a higher power of x. So maybe on this one, instead of a parabola, we'll have something more swoopy with another turn in it. But let's take a crack. The same technique is going to still work. All you do is you go to any minimums, so like this one right here, just whatever x value that is, go right down, put a dot on the x-axis of the derivative. Here's a max where, that, where the derivative should be zero because we're at a level spot. So just go right down, drop that puppy on the x-axis, and our last level spot is right there. So just once again, go down, drop a dot on the x-axis of the derivative. All right, so at this point, because we have so many of these, it's getting kind of confusing. But what we're going to do is just work through it and now that we have the dots, it's going to be pretty simple. Cause, so let's look at this first little section between these two first dots. So you can see that that's all positive slope. Any tangent lines in this area are positive slopes. So that means our f prime needs to be in positive territory, positive y values. So that means we're up here like this. Then between the next two dots, these next two x-intercepts, this is all sledding downhill to the right. We go from you know, not very negative to pretty negative to not that negative again. But the point is it's all negative. So it's all going to be down here somewhere. 
you know, should I have drawn that deeper or shallower? I don't know, further down, further up, whatever, it doesn't really matter. All that matters is I have a couple X intercepts here and I'm below the X axis between them and I made a nice smooth thing. If I put in a square corner or something, I might lose a point from a teacher, but we're working with polynomials here. So any kind of smooth curve is going to have a smooth derivative. And all right, so now that I've done the sections between intercepts, I could just have to fill in the final one. Now see, since I got these first two parts colored in here, it doesn't look like this is going to just shoot off like that. And this has to shoot down in order to sort of keep things smooth and flowy. And that's really what we're working with, but let's double check. Just now when I put this left-handed tail on here, I'm basically saying, hey, everywhere to the left of here, left of this x value, has a negative slope. Because all, you know, all my y values of every point along this last this, um, arrow, all those y values are negative, which means I need to have a negative slope on the original. But sure enough, I do. These are all negative tangent lines. All, every tangent line all along that section of the curve has negative slopes. So this works out. And then to the right of this, this last minimum going this way, anywhere along here, my tangent lines have positive slopes because I'm going up to the right. So that means that my derivative should be positive because positive slopes. And sure enough, after we, after we go from this point onwards, everything here is in positive slope territory, positive y. So, you know, the y value here, 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 my f prime values are just the y values, and those are all positive, meaning that, you know, it's got a positive slope, and that works out. All right, so once you practice it a few times, or several times, if you have a teacher that really emphasizes this skill, um, you'll start getting the hang of these. The one trick you'll come up against, or that's really helpful, is to always just start with the minimums and maximums, and put those as x-intercepts on the f prime. That's the number one first step that's always going to save your bacon. And that'll give you, get you so much further along. And then a subtle, the, the patterns you'll start noticing are stuff like, if the original has three bends in it, like one, two, three bends, then your derivative is only going to have two bends. It's going to have n minus one bends to it. So if our original function went like this, crazy polynomial with all these swoops, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six bends to it. Our derivative is only going to have five bends. One, one, two, three, four, five. That doesn't look right. One, two, three, four, oops, five. So point is the number of bends in the derivative is one less than the original. You can sort of guess the highest exponent of the original function just by counting the number of turns in it. So um, same story for the derivative. Excellent. Like I said, you're going to have to practice this a bunch. This is a doozy. So, And a plus, the, the worst part is these problems are usually worth a lot of points because there's so many aspects to them. So it's really something worth practicing and getting right.